Our first interior wall is complete. This will be the wall between this bedroom and the kitchen, which is so exciting. But we're not actually building all of the interior walls at this exact moment. We just, this one was easy, so we just wanted to get it up because we were really excited. <laughs> but the reason we're not doing them all right now is because we have to get the center section floor ready first because a lot of these interior walls are going on top of the center section floor. So let me show you what we're gonna do to them. Spencer went ahead and sanded down some of the rough spots because this floor was exposed to the elements for a pretty long time. So some of the ends of the wood actually swelled. And this is probably totally overkill, but we're gonna do it anyway. We have a ton of extra zip tape. So we're gonna go and just tape all the seams of the wood just so we have a nice tight seal. And once that's done, we're gonna go and add Baccarat all right here in this gap between the center section floor and the container floors and also fill it with caulk just so we can make sure it's nice and airtight. My gracious. Spencer didn't tell me I had a flippin' fro going on. He never tells me anything. So we're gonna finish that stuff up. Is that jacket laying on her nose? Should I tell her? Nah. to fill the backer rug to air seal, but it was taking really long and also I was going through a enormous amount of caulk in order to uh, fill those gaps. So what I decided to do is just go with the low expansion foam and do that. It seems to fill it pretty well. The reason why I was opposed to it initially is because it doesn't always fill every seam perfect. So, I was kind of against that, but right now I, it is what it is. I'll go back through and cut off the excess, and if there's still a gap, I'll caulk that or fill it. I don't know. I'll figure it out. Okay, don't look on the camera. No, ah! I don't want you to get spray foam on you. <laughs> oh my god, oh my god, oh my god, oh my god. So you may be wondering why we have all this OSB over here. Well, the reason why is because the sub or the center section floor, we initially planned it to be perfectly level with our flooring and everything because we we're going to keep these uh, shipping container floors. Now that we're covering them up, we will have two different levels: the center section and then the shipping container. So this actually is. The, fills the gap perfectly. So what, what we're going to do is just pretty much have a double subfloor. So it's going to be a very sound subfloor. So the purpose of the OSB is just to make both containers and the center section all completely one level and even. You can see the gap we had here before, about three quarters of an inch. So this OSB makes it perfectly level. You know, sometimes it's like we know what we're doing. What's the old saying? Um, broken clock is right twice a day. <laughs> oh, hey, Kenz, can you grab me the liquid nails? Sure thing, boss. Just got up, something's wrong. I waited up with wounds on my feet. Where will you be? Flickering through memories, the Polaroids yellowed in the sun, longing to be seen. So come and hide.
How does it feel? Feels strong. Dance off! We are all ready now to start working on the rest of the interior walls in the house. Now they're gonna be a little bit different from this initial one that we've done because all of the doors inside the house will be pocket doors just to help us save some space. So we've never built a wall for a pocket door frame before. So we're now going to attempt our first wall framing for a pocket door frame to be installed in it. Wait, what? I don't know if that made any sense, but I don't know. Just wish us luck. Look at that, Spencer. Your room is done. <laughs> Currently just coming up with all of the dimensions for this bathroom wall that we're working on right now. And this is actually how we have come up with all of our designs and everything thus far. Spencer and I just grabbed some pen and paper and figure it out in case you were wondering. All right, now we need a 68 inch piece. Run through that, boss. <laughs> Take what you need. Check out the two spaces for both the bathrooms. I'm not gonna lie, I, I think it's good. We set our expectations low. We pretty much were telling ourselves that these bathrooms were going to be tiny, and they are going to be small, but. We, we, we thought we were prepared to start using, like we thought we were gonna have to use like RV style uh, appliances and stuff like that. So like the guest bathroom, we thought we were like, oh, we're going to have to use this little tiny sink, this little small toilet, small shower. We were preparing for that, but it looks so much better than I thought it was going to be. Thank goodness. <laughs> so much room for activities. Welcome. Well, we are almost done building all of the rooms in our home. It is crazy how different it makes it feel inside of the house now. It's just the coolest feeling seeing our design come to life. So we wanted to answer a couple questions that we've been getting this week a lot. One of them was how are we connecting the walls to the shipping containers? All of the walls are interconnected. They are all tied together. And then also, all of the walls are screwed directly into the floor. Another important detail I forgot to mention is that all of the walls that go around the windows are actually connected to the 2x6 wood window frames, which those are all connected to the steel window frames, which are welded to the containers. We have these steel supports throughout the house, so every single time a wall butts up to it, that also is screwed directly into the steel support. And the next thing that we wanted to address is the space above the walls. Up there, obviously we're gonna have a eight foot high ceiling. And then, uh, th so this, these walls are actually a little bit higher than eight feet. So all of that is gonna be pretty much uh, dead space filled with insulation. 
And another thing that we wanted to point out is the framing itself, we backed off a half inch off of the steel wall. That way we can prevent thermal bridging and allow a little bit more insulation in between the wall framing and the steel siding. Hopefully that answered some of your guys' questions. It's really starting to come together though and we hope you guys like the way it looks so far. Yep, and if you can't tell, it feels like 100 degrees right now. It's really hot in there. <laughs> yeah. I mean, it, it's it's hot outside, but in here, it's just it's stagnant, so it's it's pretty brutal right now. <laughs> How come the sky sometimes hides behind the clouds? Maybe it's just like me, a little bit scared of heights. Why does the rain always keep on pouring down? When it's gray outside It really makes me wonder Yeah, it makes me wonder Hey, Ken, can you go ahead and grab me the liquid nails? Yeah, I think you can too. <laughs> oh, uh, hey Kent, can you grab me the liquid nails? <laughs> you gotta start itching your leg right at that exact moment. Well, it itched. It really itched. Do it one more time. Oh my god. <laughs> Third time's a charm. I'm gonna just hear you in there editing, and you're gonna just be crackling. Like... <laughs> oh, uh, hey Kent, can you grab me the nails? Liquid nails? Crap. <laughs> Really? Yeah. Ooh. A little cauliflower style bird flew around and out of the door and it flew out. Wait, you said it was cauliflower? No, it looks like. Oh, it's broccoli. Same.